To God be the glory, and welcome to this, your real illuminating moment. I'm O.W. Prince. Do you realize how often many of us practice idolatry? Do you know what God's holy and eternal righteous laws says about idolatry? Let me remind us, and I paraphrase. You must not make any idols. Don't make any statues or pictures of anything. Let me repeat that. You must not make any idols. Don't make any statues or pictures of anything, whether up in the sky or of anything on the earth or of anything down in the water. Don't worship or serve idols of any kind. Let me repeat that. Don't worship or serve idols of any kind. Because I'm Yahweh, your God, and I hate people worshiping idol gods. There is no other God but Yahweh. Exodus 24 and 5, Isaiah 45 and 5. God speaks of idolatry as a bad thing. God speaks of idol worship as a damnable practice. But today, as we look at it, nobody will admit to being an idolater. Everybody will readily say, we don't bow down to statues. We're not idolaters. Nobody's doing that these days. Well, let's examine that for a minute. For many years now, I've not had a platform from which to address the idolatry that I've seen in our Christian culture and in many Christian churches and in America. But now that the Lord has provided me this medium and this opportunity to proclaim the truth and sound the alarm and announce his judgment, that is exactly what I intend upon doing in the spirit of holiness and in the power of the Holy Ghost. To God be the glory. Now, for the sake of time, I will not repeat the lessons that I taught earlier, exposing religious idolatries that are practiced in almost every Catholic and Christian denomination, the kissing of the Pope's reign, the kneeling down at a cross, the worshiping of a Caucasian man posing as Jesus in a picture. I'm not going to review that. We will come back to that if necessary, but today I want to skip over that chapter and talk a little about America as a culture of idol worshipers. See, the God of this world and her ministers of entertainment came up with a concept called American Idol, where people voted for the person that they wanted to become an idol. Satan and her demigods of entertainment have taken the term idol and made it sound so passive, so innocuous, yet so desirable and glamorous that no one realizes that it is the very thing that God forbids and hates. No, nowadays people will tell you that they were only voting for someone in order to make them a star or an idol. But wait a minute, aren't angels the stars of God? Why would a human being want to be a star like an angel? Hmm. Isn't there a falling star called Lucifer who came to lead people astray and deceive the whole world? And isn't he the ruler of this world? Revelation 12 and 4. Isn't an idol always something that's unholy, unrighteous, ungodly, unacceptable to heaven? So how did we make a bad thing good? How did America and Christians become practitioners of the very thing that God forbids and that God hates? How did we end up being idolaters? How have we not seen this earlier? How can we not have noticed the practice of idolatry in our homes and the representation of idols on our clothing and on our bodies? How can we not have noticed the practice of idolatry plastered on our walls in the form of posters of our so-called idols? We even call them superstars. You know, basketball players, baseball players, football players. You know, singers, performers, movie stars, actors, comedians, celebrity preachers, and Hollywood preachers. You know what I'm saying. How could we not have seen the practice of idolatry in our lives where we've elevated people to the status of idols? They use that term loosely almost on every occasion. The idols of our lives. The idols in our sports, the idols on TV and movies, the idols in the pulpit, the idols, the idols, the idols. How many of our idols 
are all over our walls and tattooed on our bodies. We don't have the word of God on our walls, but we have the pictures of people who we call idols on our walls. We don't have the word of God tattooed all over our bodies, but we have the pictures and images and slogans and cliches of our so-called idols on our bodies. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't pay enough attention to God and his laws and righteousness to know what idolatry is. Satan has seduced us with glamour, glitter, and gold, fame, fortune, and sexual gratification and lewdness. And she has dumbed down our minds so that many have become so inculcated with the culture that we can't even tell when we are practicing Satanism. I read somewhere that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God, neither the sexually immoral nor idolater, nor idolater, nor idolater. I also read that the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and those who hate their brothers and sisters and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death after the judgment. No matter which way you slice it, no matter which way you look at it, those who practice any form of idolatry, including nations and Christians and all forms of religion, will suffer the wrath of God. Unless we repent, I'm O.W. Prince. And it's always in parting. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him and her out of them all. Life indeed hurts, but God heals. Thank you, God. To God be the glory. Keep looking up.